Hello, everyone. I'm Connor Kennedy, and today I will be presenting the solution for the use the code January 2023 problem two silver following directions. So in this problem, we have a bunch of signposts, and these signposts all point right and down. At each signpost, there is a cow, and this cow follows the signposts. For example, this one here follows the signposts by going right and then going right until it reaches a food vat. Each of, the food, these, each of these food vats have a different cost. And uh, once every cow reaches a food vat, that cost is totaled up. And we have to find what that total is. So this is a sample input here, where we have two signposts going right at the top and two signposts going down at the bottom. So as we saw, this cow here follows the signposts to go all the way right to the number one. This cow right here. Uh, goes right as well to the number one. This cow here goes straight down to 100. And this cow here also goes straight down but to 500. So this gives us a total of 602 as our cost for the first step. So it's a bit more complicated than that, though, because we have to also deal with the signpost changing directions. So this signpost here uh, changes direction to downwards after the first step. So now, so now this cow here uh, has to head downwards to get to the vat. And it joins this cow down here and also goes to the 100 vat. So that means that after the first signpost flip, uh, we have a total of 500, 2, plus, 2 times 100, and 1, giving us a total of 700 as our cost. In order to solve this problem, let's start with a simpler one first. So uh, let's say that there aren't any updates, there aren't any signpost flips, and we only need to find uh, the total cost on the first day. So one idea to do this is to just simulate every cow, look at every cow's journey and see where it ends up. For instance, we start with this cow. Why is that? Yeah. We start with this cow. And we follow this journey. First, it goes down, then right, then down, then right, then right. And it goes there. Then we look at this cow. It goes down, then down, then right, then right. And then we look at this cow. It goes right, etc. And we just loop through every cow on the field and see where it ends up. This is a decent idea. But the issue is it's too slow. If we look at our bounds on the problem, we have n is less than or equal to 1,500. So since n is like the width and the height of the grid, that means that this gives us a total of 1,500 squared cows, which is uh, around 2 million, approximately. <laughs> and 2 million is already a lot of cows. If we need to simulate the path for every one of these 2 million cows, well, in the worst case, the path could be as, as wide as the entire grid if the cow has to navigate the entire thing. So if we tried to simulate every path, this would give us another factor of 1,500, and that's on the order of billions. And in general, uh, you'd want to do no more than like a few hundred million calculations. So simulating every cow's journey is kind of out of the question. So how can we speed this up? Well, one idea we can do is we can try and simulate multiple cows at once. But how do we do that? Well, the important thing to notice here is that it doesn't actually matter where a certain cow comes from. Once a cow arrives at the signpost, it's the same as all the other cows that have arrived at the signpost. They'll all end up in the same place at the end because the signs from there all go in the same all go the same way for every cow. So that means that we can treat every cow that arrives at the signpost at the same. And for instance, if there are a hundred cows at a certain signpost, and that signpost goes to the right then we know that there will be 100 cows going to the right. This property makes it so that uh, calculating the number of cows that go to a certain signpost is actually rather simple, because all we have to do is look at how many cows come in from the right or from the left, and how many com cows come in from the top. So in this instance, if we have 50 cows coming from the top and 50 cows coming from the left, then we end up with the total of 101 cows at the signpost. 50 from the top, 50 from the left, and one that started at the signpost. This kind of gives us a general idea of what we could do. 
So in this example down here, with the two downs and the two rights, we can go through every signpost and just calculate how many cows end up there. So for instance, uh, we start with this signpost, then one cow ends up here because that's the cow that started the sign. And similarly for this signpost, uh, for this signpost, you see that there's one cow coming in from the top, none coming in from the left, and one starting there. So we get a total of two cows there. And then from this signpost, uh, we have one coming in from the top, two coming in from the left, and the one that started there. So that tells us there are a total of four uh, cows going at, this, at that signpost. And we do this once for every signpost, and that will tell us the total number of cows that went to each signpost. And this is useful because then once uh, those go cows go off the board, you can just look at the VAT uh, that is directly to the right of each signpost that goes off the board. And then we can calculate the total cost by just multiplying the number of cows with the cost. In terms of the order you want to process the signposts, it's best to go from, uh, from the upper left down to the lower right. This is because we don't want any situations where we haven't looked at uh, the left or the top signpost before we arrive at this one. Like if we still don't know how many cows have gone to this signpost, then we can't calculate how many cows went to this signpost. So that means that if we go from the uh, top and then do it in the same order that you read like a book uh, from the upper left to the bottom right, then that means that we never arrive at the situation where we can't calculate the signpost because this one's guaranteed to be calculated and this one's guaranteed as well. Another way you can do this is instead of uh, looking at the left and the top ones, you can just actually simulate the sending the cows down. Like if you're at a signpost that you know has like 20 cows at it or something and it's pointed down, then you just add 20 cows to the signpost that's uh, to the bottom of it. And if it's pointing right, then you'd add 20 cows to the signpost to the right. And this is how I did it in my solution. So now that we have this strategy, we actually have a lot quicker of a way to calculate the number of cows that go to each vat. Since we only have to look at each signpost once, that gives us a total of 1,500 square operations, which is 2 million, like I said earlier. So that is enough to pass. The issue is that this is just for our simpler problem, uh, where we don't have to deal with any updates to the signposts. But in the actual problem, you have to deal with up to 1,500 different updates. And if we were to just simply try this strategy on every update of board, then that would once again be too slow because we're, again, multiplying by a factor of 1,500. So how are we able to update it in a faster way? So the special thing about these updates is that it only updates one signpost at a time. And if you think about it, if you change only one signpost, then that only affects the cows that actually go through that signpost. Any other cow outside, like this one here, won't be affected by the signpost change at all because it doesn't go through that signpost. And since it's only one signpost being changed, that means that there's only one path that's actually being redirected. For instance, all of the cows from here, like that go through the signpost, like this one, for instance, it used to go this way through there to the vats. But now it's going on this different path. So now it's going like this. And every cow that goes through this sign used to go on the old path. And every cow that's going through this sign will now go on the new path. So that means that we only have to actually change the cows along two paths. Since, for instance, since there's four cows going through this central one, there's four cows going through this signpost, which means there's now four fewer cows going this way. And there's four more cows going down through this path because we've only redirected the cows that go through that signpost. So that kind of tells us how to update our solution once the signpost is flipped. Since we already have our grid of numbers, then that means that uh, that means that we only have to look at these two paths and then change the numbers along those paths. And we can do this by just simply following the arrows until we get to the vat. And this actually will run pretty quickly because, like I mentioned earlier, a path will only will only have the size necessary to span the entire grid. Since we're only going down and right, that means that there can only go down and right like two n times or something, so that until they are guaranteed to reach a vat. 
since they can't go backwards at all. So if we have if we have at most two n changes, and then that times two because we have to both subtract from this path and add to the other path, then that means that we'll have a total of um, we'll have a total of at most four n operations per uh, per update, and that actually is fast enough since that's again four times fifteen hundred, which is the number of operations times max n, which is also fifteen hundred, which is around nine million. So that's again much less than the 100 million operation limit. And in fact, they actually increased the number of operations specifically for this problem. So that means that with this strategy of only updating these two paths, we're actually going to have a fast enough solution. So let's just recap our solution. We start with our original board and we loop through all the signposts in from the upper left to the lower right. And we loop through all those in order and see how many cows go through each signpost. And then once we find how many cows go through each signpost, we then send those cows on to the next signpost. Uh, and we don't have to worry about the individual cows since we're just representing them using a number. And then once we've simulated that initial grid, we'll have all of the counts of the cows that go through each signpost. And then in the same way, we'll also have the counts of the cows that go to each vat. So we can calculate the cost by just multiplying the number of cows at each vat by its cost and then summing those up. So that gives us our initial cost. And then after we have our initial cost, we can go through each update. And when a signpost is flipped, uh, we remove the number of cows that go through it and we remove those from the old path. So in this case, since four cows went through this sign, we subtracted four cows from each uh, sign on the old path. And then we added those four cows to each sign on the new path. So that means that for each update, we can just uh, do two path updates. And then, yeah, and then once we do that, we can calculate the number of cows that end up each, each fat. And then we can find the sum again. And we don't even have to resum them. We can just uh, we can just use the path since only two vats will be changed. Uh, one vat will be decreased by the number of cows uh, that go through that went through that vat, and the other vat will be increased. So we only have to actually recalculate two of the numbers. Let's actually just simulate this on our samples, uh, the sample input. So first we do our first step, which is calculating how many cows go through each signpost. So we go from the upper left to the lower right. So we start with this one. This, since there's no signpost leading it to it, we know there's one here. And then for this one, since this cow, this signpost sent one cow to it, and there's already one cow there. We have two here. And then we send two to this vat. So this vat has two cows at it. Down here, we have one cow at the signpost. And then we send one cow to this vat. So there's one here. Oops. So there's one cow at the 100 vat. And here we have one cow again at the signpost. So we send one cow to the 500 vat. So in total, we have two times one plus 100 plus 500, which is 602 total cost. And now once we change this one, uh, we need to do the path update thing. So uh, the old path for this cow, or the, for this signpost, was it went here, uh, went here, and then went here. So since there's one cow at the signpost, that means, that means we need to subtract one from each of these counts, since there's one cow that's no longer going that way. So that gives us the new counts of one and one for this. And since there's the cow is now going on this new path to here and then to here, we have to add one to every path, every uh, count along that path. So we add one to this signpost and we'll add one to this path. That gives us a new total of, oops. That gives us a new total of two and two cows at those signposts and vats. So if we now sum up the new count, uh, we end up with 200 plus 500 plus one, which is 701 cost. And then there is more updates that happen in the solution, but we can just follow the same procedure. OK, now let's look at my code for this problem. So first of all, uh, I'm using C++. So if you're using another language, you'll have to adapt it for that. Um, but anyways, first we do all the input. Um, this input stuff is pretty simple. I read all the directions into a DERS array. This there's a array is a Boolean array. 
true represents uh true represents down uh false represents right. So and I just compare each letter in the string to see which direction it goes. Then I read in the row row vats and the column vats. So yeah, that's my input. And now we do the first step, which is calculating where each cow is going to go. So the important thing to notice here is that my, in my code, I don't treat the vats any differently from the signposts. Um, so that's why I have a slightly larger uh, counts array. I mean, I have everything slightly larger, but uh, because this counts will also keep track of how many cows went to each vat. So in this for loop here, I go through every uh, row first and then every column. And then first of all, I take into account the cow um, already at that signpost. And then once that's done, I check the signpost direction. If it's true, that means we're going down. So I add the current counts at the signpost to the counts at the uh, downward signpost. And if it's facing right, I add the current count to the count at the rightward signpost. And you can kind of think of that as where uh, all the cows at this current signpost are just following the directions to the next one. And we do have plus equals because that allows the, if there's any other signposts also pointing in that direction, then it allows uh, those cows to be included as well. So this is actually a lot simpler than you may have initially thought. Um, and that's because uh, we don't have to take into account the vats since uh, the cow is following the signpost at the very edge of the, of the grid uh, will automatically go to the vats. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, this answer variable stores how, what, what's our current total cost. And we add up all the uh, column vats first. Um, and we just can look at the counts array at the row number n uh, because uh, we actually uh, zero index our positions. So rows and columns zero through n minus one are what actually represents the signposts. And row and column n are what represents the vats. So yeah, so then we print out this initial cost here. Uh, which is just equal to our answer variable. And now we do all the curious stuff. So that's the pre-calculation step. And now we can do all the curious. So we loop through um, all the curious. We read in the i and j. We subtract one since they're zero indexed. Make sure you don't forget this step. Um, and then we flip the dirties uh, array. So that should be all expected. Um, and now we check to see if it's now pointing down or if it's now pointing right. If it's pointing down, we call this update path function. And let's look at that function. So this update path is a recursive function um, that takes three variables. It takes i, which is the row. It takes j, which is a column. And it takes v. And v is how, how many cows to add or remove from the current path. So um, for, every, uh, for every signpost on the path, um, we add v to the count. So we can note that we can have V as positive if we want to add cows, and V can be negative if we want to remove cows. Then we check to see if we've reached the edge of the board if, or if we've reached a vat. So if we have reached a vat, then we update our answer variable because that means that the total cost has changed. Um, yeah. And otherwise, that means it's not a vat. So that means we're at a signpost that's pointing in some direction. So then we check the directions and then recursively call update path. Um, depending on which way we want to go. So if there is ij, that means it's pointing down. So that means we can update the path uh, and increase the row number, which means we're going down. And similarly for the uh, sign for pointing right. So that's our basic recursive function. You don't have to write this as a recursive function. It should be also pretty simple to write as like just a while loop. Um, but this is just the way I chose to do it. And in other languages, you might want to actually write it as a while loop since you might hit like a recursion limit or something. So that's the update path function. Uh, and the way we can call that initially is we just give it our starting position and the amount we want to change it by. So for instance, if we're pointing down here, uh, we update our path first by sending all the cows to the new path. So we know that there are uh, counts ij cows at the current signpost. So, and then we add that uh, 
we add that many cows to the path uh, that starts at the bottom signpost. So that corresponds to just sending them, uh, that corresponds to like in our example when we uh, added four cows to the path at the bottom. And then we do the same thing where we update the path, but this time we make it negative because we're removing cows from the path that they used to go on. So since the cows no longer go on that path, then we have to remove that many cows. So that's uh, our two update functions. And then we also point right. Uh, we have the same case here, just uh, slightly different. We just switch to the negative signs since we're sending the cows a different way. And then at the end of every update, we just print ends. So yeah, that's the entire code for um, this problem. Uh, and if you're curious, the time complexity for this solution is O n squared plus Q n, n squared because of this free calculation step, Q n because we have to do Q curious and each update path function takes like O n time to run. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching the solution. <laughs>